Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor. Jeff, hit it. Welcome to the Counselor's Office. Welcome back to the next episode of My Therapist Sills Trying to Get Me to Quit Destiny. That's right, here we are. Solstice of Heroes, Destiny's summer event has come and it is gone. Nothing says fun like throwing your sweaty balls into a bonfire. And trust me, you'll be sweating your balls with how awful this event is. Solstice of Heroes is truly a love letter to Destiny 2 and the community. In fact, let's read <laughs> a letter from Bungie that they have sent to us. <clears throat> Dear my beloved community, how we appreciate you and your dedication to our game. We appreciate you, the many of you who have mental illnesses that continues to bring back money to our game and constantly allowing us to float in this dying situation. Now that our company is also dying, we wish for you to continue to give us your money. We have no plans to truly innovate, improve quality, or actually attempt to make anything free to play better. Anything that's free to play, don't expect any changes. Do we look like Warframe? No. Now give us your money, you pay pigs. Enjoy Solstice. While we did barely anything to change it this year, we want you to be our heroes and buy our crap. P.S. Now I have 50 cars. Suck it, nerds. Love, Pete's Parson. All right, all right, all right. So just before I start grilling Solstice of Heroes and giving some feedback, let's be fair. I'm a fair guy. Let's be a fair guy. I made a joke about Warframe, but let's not act like Warframe's events are like spectacular and that they're reinventing how season like events are in that live service game i love warframe but let's be honest destiny is probably one of the few live service games that actually has a fairly decent sized event whether it be just one activity in fact i would argue and say the dawning is more of the traditional events that you get in other games where you just do one little thing and that's it. In all seriousness, if you're a new player, this event is a pretty easy way to get weapons. Seriously, props to Bungie. You get, I don't know, like a handful every time you complete a bonfire bash, which is not bad. Okay, so what's the problem with Solstice of Heroes? If it's great for new players, then what's up? Well, I'm pretty sure when 80% of the player base leaves, I don't know how many new players are playing the activity. Most people who are still playing D2 are people who are casuals, veterans with mental illnesses. So let's talk about the activity. Again, yes, I know other games may not have the most stellar events, but that doesn't mean we still can't criticize and give feedback. We are consumers after all, and if we allow a game to consume our time, we have a right to give some feedback if we so choose. So let's talk about the activity. Why is the activity so bad? All you green horns, listen up! The main stage of Solstice of Heroes is a space called the Europe European Aerial Zone, which if you're a new player, then it, it's a whole new neat space. But if you've ever played Destiny 2 in the, I don't know, past five years, you'll probably already know that we've had the Solstice space for five whole years. Years. You think with that much time and with the final shape, the massive final big expansion, they'd shake up the system a little bit with the events. Maybe use the Pell Heart, tie those events into some epic 10-year conclusion. No, nada, not at all. Uh-uh, uh -uh. no. The most we get is that Bungie added a few decorations and uh, a few floating platforms. Thanks, Bungie. Little Timmy really was struggling with jumping. 
Now, not only has the EAZ outlived its stay, but Bungie has done little to no changes to the enemies we face in the activity. I mean, we literally just got the Dread, and they didn't even bother adding them in. Hell, they could have went... <laughs> they could have went wild and made us fight raid bosses for all I care. Oh god, Crota, he just caught... He just, he's in the corner and just ripped apart little Jimmy. Holy crap. Did you see Corneal? He just got drop kicked by Rook. Talking about the map. Bungie has changed the use of the EAZ over the years. And that has slowly decreased how much of the map is actually used. I, I kid you not. It feels like half the map is not even used. I remember having to go all over the map to kill enemies. But now, everything spawns like it's in a public event. It's in that corner. It's in that corner. You go down the street here. Turn a right. He's taking another right. Another dude spawned there across the street. I'm going to be honest. This activity is essentially a public event. A public space. Enemies fall over like nothing. Is there, is there a threat? Nothing's actually a challenge. Hell, the final boss fight is like fighting a Lost Sector boss. I played like an NPC and was able to beat the boss with minimal effort. Ah, yes, EAZ, Public Space Simulator. It's a tragedy that there isn't even an expert mode. The bare minimum of what they could do. I mean, seasonal activities have an expert mode and it rewards player nicely while playing a challenge, like while providing a challenge, should I say. A slight challenge, but it's still a challenge. They could have created cool modifiers special to the expert version. Instead, we got a gambit at home. Seriously, I wondered why I hated this event so much, and I finally pinpointed why. It's gambit at home. You run around the map, killing a small group of enemies at a, at a time. A high value target spawns, then you pick up the moats, or throw the balls and then you go and bank them or throw into the bonfire and then after a while you take you take down uh taken that spawn and you have to kill them in order to continue dunking or throwing balls into the bonfire and then you've completed the dunking your balls challenge you fight a boss see it's gambit at home though Minus the invasions, of course, right? Though I can't believe I'm saying this. I think I'd actually have more fun actually playing Gambit with no invasions than this activity. Seriously, a massive, massive map. And we get small pockets of enemies. Screw it, Bungie. Seriously, swarm me. Spawn so many enemies in the map that I literally get my cheeks clapped. The loot is very divisive this year. If you're a new player or a PVP main, you got some options. If you're a veteran in a PVE main, you've got a lot of ass, a lot of it. Not the good kind of ass either. For new players, you're going to be getting some decent loot perks to help you get started, which is nice. You could also get double perks, kind of like other parts of the game. However, there's a caveat. You have to unlock the final armor set to get access to double perks. So let's jump into the armor this year. I will give credit where credit's due. Bungie streamlined how to get armor. It's simple. You pick up the forge from Eva. You do bounties. And that's it. Why is the answer always bounties? I, I don't know. We, we've complained about bounties for years. I, I will give you credit because the bounties are easy, but my God, for years, people have complained about doing bounties for XP. Why would I enjoy doing more bounties for loot? Anyways, you pick up the bounties, you give the specific objectives, you do whatever you're supposed to do, and once you've completed them, you get a material called Armor Alloy, and you have to get 100 her armor set. Once you collect and do a piece, you go do a bonfire, then you collect the armor from the forge, 
And then you do more bounties. That's right. The time you get 50 armor alloys, and then bam, you do another bonfire, and you get this pretty shiny armor. Which, by the way, doesn't even have, like, high roll starting off. You just get, like, generic trash. You have to do more bounties for both double perks and high stat gear. Wait, Mr. Gaming Counselor, what's the problem with the grind? Seems pretty simple. Yes, yeah, it is simple. Until you realize that in order to do anything I just said, you have to grind out another material called silver leaves first which you can earn from activities all over the game okay so uh what's the problem uh people can play how they want to play so that's that's not a bad thing well little jimmy most people in most games when they do an event they want to play said events no other parts of the game they've been doing already the point of the event is to play the event it's supposed to be a special activity that isn't around all the time and comes around once a year you want to stop what you're doing and play that okay so then play bonfire bash you get silver leaves from that right yeah sure you get you get about like 10 minutes you get about five or seven leaves to re-roll a bounty it costs five leaves to pick up a bounty, it costs two. And there are five armor pieces. You see the problem? It's an artificial grind. It's not fun. It's not enjoyable. The grind sucks. The activity itself should be the most rewarding way of getting silver leaves, but it's not. Hell, I AFK'd silver leaves to 999 before Bungie played the Uno reverse card on the community and made changes to the TOS. Now I know I pissed off a large part of the console players who apparently seethe over PC and our ma macros. Let's just take a back seat, Timmy, and look how a lot of other people have actually been playing the event and see how, <laughs> how similar the grind is for solstice exploiting checkpoints that's right a massive part of the community was either afk abusing the lightful mission checkpoints and if they weren't doing that another way they were farming was farming the shattered throne dungeon boss cp now tell me do any of those i don't know sound fun those farms sound fun to you no because they're not yet they're the most efficient way of your time you're going to get more bang for your buck and your time instead of wasting your time doing events and activities that are 10 20 minutes long and you get jack squat from them the reality is people are going to always circumvent farming but i'd argue that even more that's even more true for unfair and unfun grinds if bonfire bash gave 30 leaves a run i can tell you right now most people will be playing that activity to be even more honest, silver leaves shouldn't exist. Remove making bounties purchasable via, uh, make them change to where you just pick them up via glimmer instead of the silver leaves. And I think the grind alone would be a little bit more fair. Though I could even argue that bounties themselves should have encouraged you to play Bonfire Bash. Instead, it, it focused on random crap. Yes, I know Solstice of Heroes, has always been like that. It has always been random objectives that have existed in the beginning, like do a raid or a grandmaster or some random nightfall. But it's obvious Bungie wanted to streamline the experience this year. Why not the bounties themselves? Funny enough, the bonus completion and most of those bounties was to just match elements. So I guess a lot of the community decided, hey, we're gonna pick up specific bounties farm Shirochi CP, or just do private PvP matches and abuse the fast super generation with bubbles and wells to get the orb bounties done fast. That's what I did. They could have done so much simpler things to encourage people to actually play the activity, but instead they made the grind boring, uninspiring, and not very rewarding. And the stalest events I have played in a 
video game. In fact, it's probably Destiny 2's second worst event behind the dawning, which doesn't even have an activity instead of just baking cookies. Solstice of Heroes is the epitome of how Bungie has treated this franchise. Instead of focusing on the community that has supported them, they'd rather focus on everything than Destiny itself. Hell, it was even taken, it has taken them losing employees and Sony grabbing them by their bonfire balls to actually step away from other projects and focus on Destiny for once. Hell, even the microtransactions for Solstice of Heroes is uninspiring. They didn't even bother adding a new weapon ornament this year to try to cash in on the pay pigs. The event card is mid, but we know pay pigs are nomming it up anyways because Bungie has said it's their best selling microtransaction in the game. It's almost like Bungie said, screw it. Here's this copy and paste event. No one is playing our game anyways. So who cares? It's just a free event anyways. Which is the problem. Bungie needs to focus on every aspect of the game and put passion back into the game into the lights if developers don't care then why should the consumer into the light was a passion project and you could feel it you could see it it was 100 free and they actually cared and it was a good experience why should i as a consumer actually care if bungie does it Warframe is 100% free to play and they put more effort into their game than Bungie does. Any free to play content, only the only exception in, in Destiny is, like I said, free raids and into the light. But every year we get these soulless events and it makes me sad, man. Show the community some love. Show, show them like you did the <laughs> into the light. Don't go backwards, go forward. These lame, boring activities don't increase player retention. Bungie obviously has gambled on act three of episode one to be a banger and drive players back into the game, but they've already failed on that because the first day they saw a 20K increase on Steam alone, but then it's returned back to having 80% player loss. It didn't retain anyone more than maybe a couple days. Drive players back by making content like into the lights which i'm gonna be honest which since i've already spent money on the deluxe edition i'll be here for whatever episodes have to bring whatever events have to come but honestly i think bungie has put too much faith into a one exotic mission enough to bring back 80 percent of the player base even though day one half the people couldn't even play the new mission because you had to do act one and act two so good luck on bringing more people back after that Sure, we might get a surge of players, which we did, but you think they'll come back for the next episode? Probably not. Especially with events like Solstice of Heroes, which is a free activity, yet has no soul. Players see that. Why play a game that is losing its soul? Losing its passion? The truth that ha what has become of the player base, people are done. The passion and excitement might peak here and there, but overall the hype of Destiny has left Destiny. It has left the community. Solstice of Heroes is just another example of another peak under the hood and that the, des the passion for Destiny has left Bungie. There's a reason why they wanted to focus on other projects. Bungie wanted out. They wanted to move on. Sadly, it's more apparent than before. This has been my brutally honest review of Solstice of Heroes. And I just want to say that the reason I take time to do these reviews is because I care. Like, I spent almost 10,000 hours in this game. I know what Bungie can do. I've seen it. They've shown us time and time again. Again, no one wants massive quantity. We just want quality. And they could easily do something similar, like Into the Light, quality-wise. Just show us you cared. The bare minimum. Try something. Be crazy. Hell, they're doing now they're doing this sword event where you can just go around using swords and basic projects, basic playlists. Why couldn't you do that with Solstice of Heroes? Why couldn't you do something crazy that makes it fun? Like, 
do something. It's like the meme with the the, the with the stick and the poking saying, do something already. That's what it feels like. Like Bungie's dying, we're poking it, saying, do something, hello. Honestly, I, I don't want I don't want I don't want this to be the norm. I'm tired. I know you're tired. New players have no idea what the heck is going on, but they'll find out when whenever Destiny either crashes or burns or improves, they'll eventually find out. Again, I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor, and until next time, this has been my brutally honest review of Souls of Heroes. Game out. Huzzah.